Hello movie lovers, Bob for Bob's Movie Review here, and today I'm bringing you guys my new Blu-ray and DVD shopping guide and reviews for February 2nd, 2021. Hope you guys do enjoy the video or you can find affiliate links to purchase these movies down in the description below so a little bit of a rough week guys i was planning to have my legacy season two review up this week and then universal sent me titles on thursday friday and monday and i i just want to try to get through those um so i didn't quite get through legacies that's gonna have to be pushed till next week now i did this morning watched freaky but um, I guess this isn't releasing until the night, so we'll talk about that one uh, next week. But I do have a, a big stack here to talk about, um, so let's get into it, guys. First up, we have Breach releasing on a DVD and digital. Amazon and Walmart, $10.96. Best Buy and Target, $12.99. Paramount Home Entertainment did send me over a copy of Breach for review. Now this one stars Bruce Willis, and don't worry, he's in it a large portion of the time. So a plague has basically taken out most of mankind, and they've decided to uh, go to another planet. And we, I don't think we get a whole lot of information about this, but there's these giant ships, and some have already gone, and I think this is the last ship, and it's got like 300,000 people or 400,000 or just hundreds of thousands of people on it, and they're in like cryo sleep, and there's a small crew that's taking care of the ship. I believe it was supposed to take like six months or something like that to get to this new planet. Um, they had this weird engine thing that did some sort of time thing, I don't know. But there's a saboteur uh, on board the ship, and basically they have to find out who it is and try to stop them. So this movie, to me, it doesn't really do anything new. Uh, a group of people in a ship going across space, and there's... Uh, some sort of alien life form that starts taking them over. And, you know, we've seen the story many times. It doesn't do it poorly, for sure. I, I definitely, uh, I liked the overall production of the movie, and I liked the acting, and I liked the story. And I would say Bruce Willis phoned it in less than typically does in his most recent releases. So I feel like this is a pretty good movie. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I definitely uh, liked the way they did pretty much everything in it. Its only drawback is it's not super original. They didn't really break any new territory. Uh, so I gave it three and a half out of five. I definitely think for a sci-fi alien space travel thing, it was fun. Next up is La Casa. This one is releasing on a Blu-ray. Amazon, 1995. Epic Pictures did send me over a copy of La Casa for review, and I did post an unboxing of this. If you'd like to check it out, just search for La Casa on my channel. So if you couldn't tell by the name, this is a Spanish movie, and it is in Spanish with English subtitles. Now at the beginning of this movie, they kind of have these news uh, stories, you know, f flashing about all these things that happened at this house and how it's now haunted. And I kind of found those to be a little annoying because they, they were like, trying too hard to put in static noise and it was too loud and it just I didn't care for the way they did that um, and then we go to the actual movie and I didn't realize this for a while and I would actually have to go back and re-watch it to see if it is the way it is but I, I felt like something was just off a little bit um, it felt a little different and I couldn't really figure out what it was maybe halfway through or a little more than halfway through I was like wait this is like a one-shot movie where there's no breaks in the camera and that can be done you know without just taking one shot just you have to edit it together right but basically the movie looks like one shot and this kind of gives it a found footage feel without actually being a found footage movie so if you can imagine when the character moves the camera follows them they hear a noise instead of cutting back and forth you actually see the camera moving everywhere and it's kind of interesting i, I like the way they did it I, feel, I think it felt really good in this movie so in the movie this uh cop he goes to investigate reported noises at this house presumably the house from the stories in the beginning um i don't know that they really show that but i mean that's what you're gonna assume i think uh and so he goes in there and it's real dark and there's lots of apparitions and and just kind of things he sees as he's walking around and lots of jump scares really creepy atmosphere and I thought this was really fun. You know, it was definitely a very simple kind of way of doing a movie, but I think being very effective for fans of the horror genre or found footage genre. And I just, I really enjoyed the way they did this. And like I said, there's some good jump scares. The ending, 
I don't know. I was lukewarm on the ending. But overall, guys, I like this one quite a bit. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Definitely a, a interesting movie. I gave it a three and a half out of five. Next up is Sky Sharks. This one is releasing on a Blu-ray. Amazon Best Buy at Walmart $22.99, Target $23.99. Also releasing on a DVD. Amazon $9.96, Target $19.89, Best Buy $19.99, and Walmart no listing. Now MPI Media did send me over a copy of Sky Sharks for review. I did post an unboxing of this. If you'd like to check that out, just search for Sky Sharks on my channel. <laughs> so this movie is just really crazy out there uh, movie about Sky Sharks. And these are sharks that were somehow engineered to be able to fly and live in the atmosphere without breathing water. Um, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a little tough to say with a straight face, but so it, we find out that it was actually a Nazi experiment and they've been in hiding for over 70 years and they're actually piloted by Nazi zombies and they've decided now that they want to take over the world. Now, at the beginning of this movie, we're kind of introduced to the Nazi zombies and the sharks and so much blood and gore and just ridiculous over the top killing of like all these people on an airplane. For some reason, the Nazi zombies want to attack airplanes. I'm not sure that we're given a reason why, but uh, they kill a lot of people. And then we kind of get into like this lull in the middle of the movie where they're kind of explaining everything. And, and one of the scientists that was involved is telling his daughters about it. And I feel like some of the scenes to me just seem out of place. Like it just seems like random montages or, or just random things where I was just like, what does this have to do with anything? And there were lots of points where I was just like, uh, you know, confused on what they were going for. Um, and then we actually get into like a whole, I was it a Vietnam War section where they're talking about how they created this super soldier and this allowed the Nazi zombies minds to link up and I, I don't probably link up with the sharks too. And I was just like, I don't know, is this important to the movie? Um, and then towards the end, we get into tons more just crazy, insane amounts of gore and like just people being like ripped apart and heads being cut off. And I mean, it, it's pretty over the top. Um, as far as the gore and then they like, <laughs> they're just having like blood just spraying everywhere and um, basically the army or some sort of soldiers or the people who work for this company or whatever they were um, they have to go fight the the sky sharks <laughs> you know this is, you know I th this is a fun movie I think in a lot of ways it was better than I was expecting um, you know the to me it's hard to call this a low budget movie because like they had really good effects and they had tons of practical effects and everything was well done. I mean, they did have some scenes where they like did some weird things with the background and changed the lighting and it just comes off as really weird instead of being, I feel like sometimes they think if you change the lighting or the look or whatever, it's more authentic. But to me, it just comes off weird. Um, but it was an okay movie overall, guys. I gave it a two and a half out of five. Next up is Let Him Go. This one's releasing on a Blu-ray, DVD and digital. Amazon and Walmart, $22.96, Best Buy, $22.99, and Target, $30.49. It is also releasing on a DVD, Amazon and Walmart, $17.96, but Target, $19.99, and Best Buy, $22.99. Now, Universal Home Entertainment did send me a copy of Let Him Go for review. I did post an unboxing of this. If you'd like to check that out, just search for Let Him Go on my channel. This one was about a family, and their son is out riding a horse. Um, and he falls off or whatever. We don't know really exactly what happens, but they find him and he's died. And um, fast forward basically a couple years later right away and their ex-daughter-in-law and their grandson, uh, she meets another guy and gets married to him. And then again, I guess we fast forward again really quickly. I'm not sure how far, not super far. Um, they go to visit them and it turns out they've moved away and not even said anything. And you know, of course they feel betrayed because it's their grandson. And uh, the woman had seen the, the new husband actually beating uh, their ex-daughter-in-law and the grandson. Sorry, it's a little hard to say. Uh, but, you know, she was real concerned. So they decide they're going to go track them down. Now, they get to uh, finding out where these people live. And they find out they're not real good people. They're going to try to either get her to give over the grandson or bring her and the grandson back with them and take care of them. But the family 
is not going to let this happen. And so they end up kind of really having to fight for him, like really fight for him. Now, to me, the, the first hour of this movie was pretty slow. And while I do get like they're trying to establish the characters and their motivations, it just seemed uh, too slow to me. Like after the first hour, I was like, oh my gosh, there's another hour. It is a two hour long movie or real close to two hour long movie. And to me, the first hour, it just doesn't have enough to really keep your interest. The second half is one of the best movies I've seen this year. I mean, it gets so crazy and you just can't even believe the stuff that happens. And I think Kevin Costner is really great. Like, I mean, I've, I don't know that I've ever really been a big fan of his, but I just feel like in the last few years, like I've, I've been, <laughs> I've become a fan of his, uh, more recent stuff and you know guys i really enjoyed this movie even though the first hour was slow and it, it made the movie really long uh it's i still highly highly recommend you check this one out um i gave this one a four out of five like i love this movie so much next up is wild mountain time this one is releasing on a dvd amazon and walmart 1496 target 14.99 and best buy 17.99 now universal home entertainment did send me over a copy of wild mountain town for review i did post an unboxing of this if you like check that out to search for Wild Mountain Time on my channel. Now this movie is, I, I guess you'd call it kind of a romance or a, a romance slash drama about uh, these two people who live in Ireland and how she's like been in love with him since they were children. And he's either been oblivious to it or not been able to really articulate his emotions. <laughs> and so, you know, the, their parents are getting older and sicker and some are dead or some are going to die soon. And his dad doesn't want to leave him the farm because he doesn't have a family and he wants somebody who has a family. So he might sell it to uh, his nephew, uh, an American. And so the whole time the girl is like trying to get him to notice her. But what? But he does notice her. He just can't come out and say it, even though... Uh, he probably knows how she feels. He just can't really bring himself to come out and say how he feels. Now, at the beginning of this, I was, I just thought it was real painful. <laughs> like, I was just, like, so annoyed. But as I got further and further into the movie, I actually started enjoying it. And I started liking the characters. And I, I guess, in a way, I kind of really started to um, see myself in the main character. Just having anxiety and, like, just having trouble, um conveying your feelings and and feeling like you could tell people stuff and you know putting yourself out there and it's it's just all hard stuff and you know i feel like i've i've always uh really struggled with that and so maybe that was part of why i liked the movie like i just saw that this character reminded me of myself in some ways not in every way but in in this way and so in the end i did i did kind of like the movie i thought it was interesting mainly because of the characters like i wasn't as much i guess in love with this story but you know i did like the movie it was very well acted um and i liked it i gave it a three out of five next up is love weddings and other disasters this one's releasing on a blu-ray and digital amazon and walmart 14.96 target 16.99 and best buy 17.99 also releasing on a dvd amazon and walmart 12.96 best buy 13.99 and Target $14.99. Next up is Host. This one is releasing on a Blu-ray. Target $10.99, Amazon, Best Buy and Walmart, all $12.99. Also releasing on a DVD. Amazon and Walmart $7.96, Best Buy $9.99, and Target no listing. Next up is Tesla. This one's releasing on a Blu-ray. Best Buy $16.99, Amazon and Walmart $17.71. Target $17.79, also releasing on a DVD, Amazon and Walmart $12.96, Target $12.99, and Best Buy $13.99. Next up is Horror Noir, A History of Black Horror, releasing on a Blu-ray, a little tongue twister there, uh, Amazon, Best Buy, and Walmart $14.99, Target no listing. It is also releasing on a DVD, Amazon and Best Buy $13.99, Walmart $27.97, and target no listing. Next up is Do the Right Thing. This one's releasing on a 4K Blu-ray and digital. Amazon, Best Buy, and Walmart, $19.99. Target, $23.99. Target will have an exclusive steelbook, which includes 4K Blu-ray and digital for $22.99. Next up is Small Soldiers, releasing on a Blu-ray. Amazon, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, all $12.99. Next up is Mouse Hunt, releasing on a Blu-ray. Amazon, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, all $12.99. Next up is Ladybugs, releasing on a Blu-ray. Amazon, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, all $12.99. Next up is Yours, Mine, and Ours, releasing on a Blu-ray. 
Amazon, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, all $12.99. Next up is Lassie, releasing on a Blu-ray. Amazon, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, all $12.99. Warner Brothers sent me over a copy of Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, the complete first season, and I post an unboxing of this. If you'd like to check that out, just search for Scooby-Doo on my channel. So this is a series about uh, the gang, obviously, solving mysteries, except for there is a guest for each episode, and um, I wouldn't call it necessarily celebrity guest because there's like Wanda Sykes, Chris Paul, you know, there's real celebrities who you would call them by their name. And there's things like Abraham Lincoln and uh, Batman and, you know, people who, who aren't necessarily a celebrity, but they're a character that's well known. Now, of course, it's Scooby-Doo and who doesn't love Scooby-Doo? I, I felt like there was a little bit different look uh, on some of this. Uh, mainly like in the backgrounds, like, I don't know, it just seemed, something seemed a little different than a lot of the other Scooby-Doo I've seen, but I definitely enjoyed this one, guys. It was a lot of fun. You know, Scooby-Doo is always great. I always love it. And I give this one a three and a half out of five. Lionsgate sent over Born a Champion for review. I did post an unboxing of this, so like, check that out. Just search for Born a Champion on my channel. Now, this movie was about this guy who is a jujitsu fighter, and it's kind of like in before MMA or kind of the beginning of MMA and um, he ends up like going to Dubai I think it was and he's supposed to fight this tur he's in this tournament I think it is and uh, he's basically just destroying everyone and he gets to the last guy and he just gets annihilated like so badly beaten that he can never fight again and then we kind of just briefly will go over kind of like where his life's gone and how Things just haven't really worked out for him. And there's kind of like documentary elements to this, although it's not based on a true story. Um, they do mix in like interviews with his family and friends. And then it comes about when he's like in his 40s that maybe the first match wasn't on the up and up. And I don't want to get into exactly what happens, but basically he ends up getting a rematch, but he's out of shape. Not out of shape, but not training. He hasn't been training and he's much older now and um but he decides that he has to uh do this fight now to be honest guys i love the story like i love the characters and i thought they did such a good job there were so many really just great emotional moments and um i feel like the ending was perfect and i really enjoyed this one it didn't have like a huge huge budget and you could definitely tell like when they would do the fights you know there wasn't a lot of extras and they were in these small buildings or or whatever you know it wasn't like this extravagant production but i feel like they did a really good job conveying this story and really uh putting some great emotion into it and i i love this movie guys um, definitely check this one out. I give it a four out of five. Four Digital Media sent me over The Village in the Woods for review. I did post an unboxing of this. If you like, check that out. Just search for The Village in the Woods on my channel. So this movie is about this young couple. They're kind of like driving out in the middle of nowhere and they're trying to get to this village. And um, they finally, they run out of gas or something and they end up stumbling upon the village, I guess. And they get there and the people there are real odd and they're acting real weird. And they're, they're super, they're like trying to be super helpful and, and all this stuff. And they slowly start revealing, you know, something's weird. Like, do they know something? And to me, like, they, they don't want you to know what's going on in this movie. Now, I'm not saying I don't like a mystery and, and maybe trying to solve what's going on, but I feel like in this movie, they really don't give you uh, anything to go off of, and you're confused throughout most of the movie, and you just don't know what's going on. They do luckily explain it all in the end, but um, this girl, she says that she inherited the tavern or whatever it was, and but there's there's some money making scheme, and I was like, well, what's the money making scheme? Her and her boyfriend, I don't think they were married. They go there, and they're gonna go to this tavern, and they're gonna they're gonna what? Sell it? If they don't really own it, how are they gonna sell it? Like I don't I don't understand what the money making scheme was. How they're gonna make money off this? But um, the people. I don't want to say why, but the people all know something's up. And then again, they do flashbacks where she met this woman, and this woman told them, I guess, about the the tavern and and how to get get there and it was never really explained why how they met her why she was telling them this what their plan was you know just somehow they're gonna get there pretend they own the place and they're gonna make money off it that's basically all the information you're given and um 
But the town people, they know what's up, and um, there's definitely something a lot more sinister going on. Now, I don't feel like this is particularly a badly made movie, but I did not enjoy the fact that I just, at no point until the entire movie is explained, did I have any clue what's going on. Like I said, I feel like you can have a mystery movie, but you got to give the audience some kind of something to go off of. Like, who is the woman that told them to go to this house or, or whatever? Or how are they going to make money off it? Or, you know, she's pretending to be this other woman. But, I mean, like, they just keep saying that she's not the woman. But why, why is she pretending to be her? Who is she? Like, we don't know. We don't know anything. And I found that to be uh, super frustrating in the movie. So overall, guys, I thought this movie was all right. I gave it a two and a half out of five. I just wish they would have given you a lot more to go off of. I understand now that I've seen it that they didn't want to give away certain aspects of the movie. But I feel like you got to give the audience something. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys have seen any of these movies or you plan to pick any of them up, let me know down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, subscribe for more videos, check out the videos, and I'll see you guys next time.